2NURFM, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. Uh, John O'Connor, welcome to the studio this morning. Thank you very much, Tom. I saw a very interesting article and the headline just reached out and grabbed me and, and I'm not in your line of work. I'm just merely a humble radio announcer, but physicists have calculated that we're probably, in inverted commas, not the only advanced civilization ever in the universe. And I just thought, duh, it, it just seemed to be the case. It, it's always a challenging concept. And in fact, we talked about this on the segment uh, a few months ago called the Drake Equation. And, and this is a variation on that because the Drake Equation was intended to work out What's, how many civilizations are there out, out there right now, somewhere in the universe? And, and there are big unknowns in that. And, and apart from all the unknowns that some of them being tidied up, I mean, when it was written, in, when it was first put down in 1960, they didn't know if any other star had a planet around it. Well, now we know that there's a, odds on that there's at least one, there are more planets out there than there are stars. Yes. So, so that's, that's one thing that's been pegged down. But the goal of that was to work out the number of, alien civilizations out there who we could either hear from or contact. And that's what the the search for extraterrestrials were were all about. Because if there's no one out there, you wouldn't be sitting here listening for them. Um, No, it'd be a wasted exercise, wouldn't it? Too right it would be. Uh, But the the problem is, there was one of the big unknowns was, how long does a civilization last? I mean, do civilizations wipe themselves out after once they get to a certain point? And how long are they in a period where they they communicate? Now, we've been... Civilization for humanity is arguably about 10,000 years, but only for about 100 years have we been broadcasting signals that could be detected elsewhere in the universe. Uh, and you know, if the Cold War ended up with uh, us being showered with nuclear weapons, after 100 years, we'd pretty well wiped out our technology and probably our, our race. So is that true of other civilizations? So that was a really big unknown. 100 years, 10,000 years, million years, what's the answer? So rather than get tied up with that, in other words, how many races are there out there now they came from the other way and worked out what's the probability that at no time in the past has another civilization ever existed in other words we're the first we're the only is that just human arrogance though well you're working out the probability i mean you know if the probability is uh is really high that we're the only one then yeah we can be arrogant Okay. But so they they worked out the probability there had been no other civilization anywhere in the 13.5 billion years of the history of the universe. And so the answer they came up with and and this is reported in a journal called Astrobiology. Actually I'm intrigued there's a journal called Astrobiology because we can't go out there and actually measure it, but anyway, they can still do research. Anyhow, on moving it. <laughs> exactly right. Moving on. Yeah, moving right along. They've worked out that for for, for the the planets out there that could sustain life, and, and for us, we're arrogant about that and assume that it requires water. So we know, we know there are planets within that what's called the Goldilocks zone or the habitable, z- uh, the habitable zone around a star where wa- liquid water is available. Um, there are a certain number out there, and there have been more. They would have, they've worked out that to have a habitable planet and not have life, the chance of that is one in 10 billion trillion in other words, the fact that there hasn't been another intelligent life, intelligent civilization, is effectively one chance in 10 to the 22. That's, ten, that's one and 22 zeros out. It's large so numbers. It's incredibly improbable that there hasn't been life before. As a physicist, what do you think? Do you, do you think um, we've been visited and do you think, what do you think is out there in that situation? Like we're, we were talking before we came on air and it's, whether it's popular science fiction, one of two things either happens. If you're a fan of Stargate, uh, the aliens, nine times out of ten, are, are white, uh, English-speaking race or they're grey with a light bulb head. <laughs> it's, it's nothing in between. Yes, actually, there, there was an interesting article I read recently. It said, from Star Trek you learn that it doesn't matter where the population comes from, humans can... Um, can copulate with them. <laughs> that's that's from Star Trek. But anyway, fantastic. That's, that's, um, that's a scary one. It yeah. is, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> but um, there, there's, you know, there there are some. Uh, well, you know, what, what are the chances they're human? The, the, the same thing applies to our planet here. What are the chances that we are human here? Because we've had about what five or six mass extinctions on this planet, and each time we have a mass extinction, whatever's the the biggest and best population at the time usually gets wiped out, and some other little Life come form comes up. So for a long time, this planet was populated by dinosaurs. So if 
the, if the big meteorite hadn't turned up, and if life was still going on as per or the, the climate, then the most intelligent life on the planet would be dinosaurs. And maybe they'd be intelligent dinosaurs that would be doing the sorts of things we're doing. So I don't believe they're like us. They've, there's, and, and, and the other thing too is if a billion years ago a planet got beyond this point of not annihilating itself and they're still around, you know, maybe they spread out through their region because they have to live beyond their star. That's mm. a, a big issue. Uh, they could be something that we couldn't recognise. I mean, they could be... I mean, they could be cyborgs. I mean, they could have actually uploaded themselves into machines and, and you know, a single entity could live at, you know, a million years. Now, imagine the intelligence and the wisdom and oh. so forth that a million-year-old entity might have. I mean, we, we You'd never win an argument and, with it, would no, you? Because... You wouldn't. You would. <laughs> and, of course, uh, th th this is the sort of thing where, yeah, where, where, you know, we can't comprehend it. Have we been visited? I don't think there's any evidence yet to prove that we have been. Okay, there you go. A, a long answer to a very simple question, but yeah, imagine being stuck next to a million-year-old person at a party and <laughs> being told, in my day, <laughs> Professor John O'Connor, thank you very much, probing the depths of the universe.